What's going on everybody? I know you guys have been asking for a long time for a view of our holdback room as well as what's for sale. So today we're going to show you some of our holdbacks and what's for sale. Now I actually just got everything organized with Jacob a couple weeks ago so I know where everything is. So for example, these two shelves are going to be black knights right here. They're going to be growing up like they might be a little bit small and then they'll be growing up and we'll be listing them for sale. This one's actually not small. So as I notice that they are not small, they will eventually go to the for sale rack. And so the for sale rack for us is going to be right over here and I need to build five more of these that can fit along that wall so that I can easily just pull out geckos that I know I have listed on the website. So you can see this one is just, um, you know, one of our lower priced bold blood animals right there. Um, this is one of our black knights that we have up on the website. This is another black knight we, oops, <laughs> that we have up on the website. Um, we're also going to be putting about 10 more black knights up on our website. And don't forget guys, now you can pay for all of our animals via shop pay. And so what shop pay is, is it's a credit card loan system where you're loaning the money from Shopify at the checkout process from our website. Um, you loan the money at a very small interest rate. It's something like three to 5%, depending on how long you loan it for. So for example, a $2,000 loan might cost you like $120 in interest if you were to pay it across one year. And if you were to pay it in three, six, or like eight month periods, then it's gonna be even less interest than that. So just so you know, you can buy expensive animals from our website and pay it off across time. So I'm gonna show you some of our holdbacks over here and the reasons why I decided to hold them back. Um, a lot of them are tangerines and they have either green coloration to them or they're, they're just big and juicy and older and ovulating or some, something's really unique about them. So what I really like about this one right here, it's tough to kind of handle them one handed sometimes. You got to learn, you got to learn the flippies. Like you, you got to learn how to twist and flip your hand. But you can see this is not a white and yellow, but you can see it has such clear like white sides over there. And it just has this beautiful like white and yellow bright kind of look to it. And so one of the benefits of me holding back every single animal that we produced like over the last few years is I could really, really select some high end stuff. Cause whenever you're line breeding, high end stuff is definitely going to pop out. And when that stuff pops out, then you will be able to hold it back for yourself. So let's see what else I got in here. Eventually I would like to get a hold back rack where I could just pull stuff out. This one is really cool. This is kind of part of that banded tiger project almost that I've been mentioning on some of our videos lately. You could see like the orange bands in between the green patterning and uh, it's really cool. And so an animal like this, I wanna hold back to continue to further that um, banded tiger project. So that's kind of what I'm naming it. And shout out to Sarah and Kyle up in uh, Canada because they're making little figurines right now that are modeled after our banded tiger morph that we're working on. This one is absolutely gorgeous. Oh my gosh, you guys have to check this out. This girl is ahead of her time for sure. Look at this. I mean, the camera is not really picking up the exact level of her color and saturation but she is a gorgeous, gorgeous animal. You can see that bright circle right there. Look at those two circles. You see why I held her back? An amazing animal. And just picture her being brighter in person. You know what I mean? Because tangerines always are brighter in person. Um, she's an amazing animal. Hi, sweetheart. So we're gonna put her back. A lot of, all of these tangerines actually, uh, for the most part, are from our Mandarin Inferno project which we coined Manferno. So if you like any of these Mandarin Inferno stuff, we do have a bunch of really nice Manfernos for sale right now on our website. And so take advantage of that. Use the credit payment system to where you don't have to pay it all off at once, especially if it's a more expensive animal. And um, that will allow you to, to buy expensive animals. This one, this one actually 
came from our Mandarin Bold stuff, and it became an albino, but check her out. Check this little gal out. Look at that beautiful head pattern. Like, you know, it's got the, the pattern over the nose there, a little bit of Halloween mask stuff going on. And she is just, she is a gorgeous gal. Um, she's, she's obviously a little bit less, she's not really that orange, you know, because only one of her parents was tangerine. But what happens is because she came from a dad that was very high contrast in tangerine, which is our um, Mandarin boy, if you breed her back to a high quality tangerine, she's going to produce babies that are very high quality tangerine. So I call it the double generation cross back. And that's the same rule of thumb that I use for black knights as well. So here's one of our uh, Afghanicus black knight holdbacks. So this is a generation one Afghanicus that was crossed to a black knight. So this is 50% Afghanicus and then 50% Macularis coming from the, oops. See, I love, this is why I love having carpet because it's just so soft down here. And I love the feeling of like carpet on my feet and everything. But also if a gecko happens to fall, it's no problem whatsoever. So um, yeah, black knight Afghanicus generation one, not looking very dark right now, right? But watch generation two, what happens when that second, I call it the second generation crossback. When the second generation crossback happens from a pure line back to, back to a second generation, it's amazing. And check this gal out. Look how heavily contrasted she is for being just 50% Black Knight. This is why I wanted to cross Afghanicus into Black Knight because the Afghanicus bloodline has so much dark spotting and contrast to it already that adding Black Knight to it is just going to be simply amazing. So we're going to put that gal back right there and we'll keep going. These, these are all our holdbacks. Um, this is a Black Knight crossed to a Midnight Blizzard and... Actually, this is generation two, but the reason I kept her is because she's big, she's chunky, even though she's not super dark, she's big and chunky, and she's possible het blizzard. And so when we take this generation two and cross this back to a black knight, amazing things are going to happen. And something that happens with the midnight blizzard line that when we bred into black knights, I noticed it kind of gives the animals this smoky effect. You know what I mean? Like, look at my pants are kind of bluish, smoky. Uh, this animal just has like a smoky effect to her. She's really cool. And she's obviously pretty large. And we want to breed for bigger and bigger black knights. So she's going to help us accomplish that for sure. Um, this one is a little bit of a lighter colored generation one black knight Afghanicus. So nothing really to show off there. She's just big again. Um, sometimes it's all about what's in the lineage. Uh, similar to dog breeding, um, you know, we've had conversations about pedigrees and dog breeding on our live streams. If you breed animals within a lineage, sometimes their genetics will pop out multiple generations later. And so even if a gecko doesn't look super dark right now, but it's from Black Knight Dark Lineage, you can get some really dark stuff in the next generation if you're lucky. All right. So sometimes when they have a little bit of build up in their water i just toss it so i forgot i put the garbage out here hi hun and check out this beautiful gal one of the things that i did with my mandarin project this year is i crossed it to a lot of bold stuff um so it's it's kind of you know because a lot of our bold stuff is hyperxanthic and white and yellow um, so I want to bring out a lot of that stuff. This is a generation one cross. When we cross this back to a Mandarin or back to a pure tangerine, the babies will be amazing for sure. So that's why I really want to keep her. Plus she has really good size. So that's awesome. This one was just a super unique Inferno Bold Cross. Check this girl out. In <laughs> Inferno Bold Cross, absolutely stunning and unique pattern and everything to her 
Um, look at this girl. Like that's a that's what we call green in the hobby is kind of like this limey yellowish green. And this is part of my, not my own clown line per se, but kind of my own clown line, which is I want to make clown looking animals from my own collection. And the way that I'm accomplishing that is through tangerine, emmerine, bold uh, type stuff. And of course, white and yellow as well, because even though clown technically doesn't have white and yellow in it, um, I do like what white and yellow does. And so I'd rather have the option there to create a white and yellow clown line of my own uh, compared to not having the option there. You know, so whenever you're breeding animals, certain animals will just stand out from the rest of the animals that you create. And uh, those are the ones you want to hold back and start your own lines out of or your own projects out of. So that's exactly what all of these holdbacks are for us. And now you guys get to kind of see what's what's going on behind the scenes here. This is another amazing, this is from our Hyperxanthic White and Yellow Bold stuff. It's just a really interesting white and yellow bold kind of stripe. It comes from bold stripe lineage. Obviously Tremper Albino, because we only work with Tremper Albino, um, but it's just really really interesting the color and the pattern and so i wanted to keep it it has like this really thick crown if i could call it that way like you see that crown you see that crown right there leading into the tip of the nose let's see if we could get a a view of that real fast right right oh, oh she's she's moving a lot right there it's just really interesting how it kind of like circles around her entire head and then goes down her nose kind of rhymes goes down her nose so anyway even though she's not a tangerine she would be a great pairing for a tangerine and that's you know our bold tangerine cross stuff i'm really excited about okay this is one of the most exciting things that i'm experiencing right now first of all this girl is huge she's got to be like a 70 gram 70 80 gram girl and one of the reasons she, she's so big is because this is a generation one Mandarin crossed to pure fasciolatus. I love what fasciolatus does in the face. It kind of makes the animal look more pastel-like in color. Um, this is just pure fasciolatus to our Mandarin boy, which our Mandarin boy is a bunch of different lines of tangerine, but he's primarily Mandarin, OG tangerine, and Tango Crush. Um, and in person, this animal is so bright. You could catch a little bit of its brightness right there but for being a generation one simply amazing um tangerine needs to be outcrossed it's it's a line that has been crossed to itself and inbred for so long so it's only going to benefit especially getting it into wild type bloodlines and so what is more wild than afghanicus fasciolatus turkmenicus and each one of those has their own characteristic kind of color appeal the fasciolatus makes animals more lighter more pastel like in color it also makes for a few different colors to go on in the head and the face as you can see here you got like the green over the eyes you got a little bit of yellow some orange you got patches of white almost like a pied really truly amazing stuff i'm really excited about that project and the animals are pretty big we got some newspaper here the reason i like to throw these away is because bacteria builds up in um water bowls and stuff like that uh you know whenever things sit and i've never had a problem with you know bacteria being an issue for the geckos but just in case i like to throw it away if i am seeing it at the moment this again is our blood tangerine cross to bold project so our bold stuff crossed into blood and you could really see a lot of the, you know, in person, a lot of the greens. But what's what's being picked up on camera is like just the interesting spotting, the kind of sweater. That's what I'm calling them right now. The sweater that they wear, which is like that 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 green kind of background pattern that hugs around the orange. So just an amazing project. And obviously this one has a really cool like head kind of. Uh, slash there so we'll put her away 
There's a fasciolatus mandarin. There's the bold. There's the inferno bold. And this one was part of the mandarin bold again. So we're going to put these guys back. And we'll probably take a look. Let's see if we could take a look at like some of our more richly richly orange geckos and then we could probably end the holdback stuff there for now so i see let's see there's some hiya buddy oh there's some black knight holdback stuff here i think a lot of our tangerine holdback stuff is right here so i'm gonna pull them yeah you can see just a ton of them tang 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 and these are beautiful orange tangerines you know like competing with the top of the tangerines that's in the market right now and our prices are even very competitive like we're we're definitely below market value on prices just because we have so many and i want them to be affordable for you guys but here's a beautiful generation one um a lot of our stuff is starting to develop a ton of carrot tail carrot tail is more commonly seen in the albino versions um, but this animal is definitely more orangey red in person. If I move the animal into the light, you might get a little bit more hint of that. But it's always really tough taking a picture of tangerines or even a video of tangerines. Um, you have to just see them in person. Now, once we build, we're actually having plans to build um, a gecko facility or, or rent a gecko facility, you know. Uh, once that happens then we we can put like good lighting like in the ceiling to where it's like bright white lighting so that we could get the best color possible through video and um through video and picture and so yeah like this animal right here is like two shades more orange in person and she also has that very white kind of um like belly appearance and underneath her chin let's see if we could get that there there we go. I've noticed that with some of our Mandarin Inferno projects, they just have more white around their lips. It's really, really interesting. There we go. Maybe against the carpet, you can see a little bit better, but it's still not as beautiful as she is in person. So you guys will have to come to our facility one day and see these gals in person. As I get a little bit closer, you can kind of see the color of them a little bit more. But yeah, this specific line I'm noticing, um, they have like really white undertones around their lips. And then some of them have like, I'm just calling it cookie, cookie markings on their toes. This girl does not have a lot of cookie markings on her toes, but some of them do. So maybe we'll come across a, a cookie marking girl here soon. Uh, let's see what we got next. Ooh, this one is really, really green. Really green. Uh, let's see if we could get nice and close. You could see, you could see those greens, but she's way more orange in person. But you could definitely see those greens right there. Uh, she does not have the cookie feet, but she is a beautiful, beautiful gal. Let's see if we could show a little bit closer to her true color by getting closer. You can see all the speckling of green there. And I would just say in general, she's three times more orange than what she's showing on camera, just to give you a reference. And even when we're taking pictures of our animals for sale, it's really hard to, to allow those, those pictures to translate. I, I think everybody in the industry has problems with that. But I have a customer uh, satisfaction guarantee clause, which basically protects you. Ooh, this one's cool. This one's Eclipse right here. Eclipse, or this one could be an NDBE girl, which is awesome. We're actually testing out right now to see if Eclipse and NDBE are allelic. Allelic is similar to ball pythons where you create an all white snake by breeding, let's say Mojave to Mojave. Um, there's also other ways to make an all-white snake. You could breed yellow belly to yellow belly. Um, but allelic genes are basically genes that sit on the same genetic location of the gecko's DNA. But they're 
technically different mutations. Um, so here you can see the red stripe, those two orange stripes going down this girl. And she is again, twice as orange in person as she is in this camera footage right now. So she's beautiful. I definitely need like a camera person to see if there's a possible way for us to uh, replicate true to color animals. Uh, she does have a little bit more care tail. Some of our girls have like 75% uh, leading almost to like 100% care tail. Some of those girls are breeding right now. So we'll show that in a separate video. We'll show our breeders. These are our holdbacks that will be breeding soon. All right, take a look at this one. So compare the last one, which was not a Tremper albino, to this one, which is a Tremper albino. This one is not nearly as saturated in color as the last one is, but because she's Tremper albino, it kind of hides the color a little bit. Um, and so I know the genetic potential of this animal because I know that because she's Tremper albino, it's hiding, it's hiding a little bit of the saturation of orange. And so you have to be aware of that. But one of the things that I really like about her too is she has this like stonewashed kind of effect to her. And you could even see a ton of just speckling carrot tail going all the way down her, her tail right there beautiful girl and definitely more orange in person but she's not as orange as the uh the girl that we just looked at you know what i mean and i'll always be true to accurate when i describe an animal like for sale and if you ever got an animal and it wasn't the expectation of what you thought you were getting talk to me because I would love to make it so that it's right with you, whether that's a price adjustment or a credit or whatever it might wind up being. Uh, customer satisfaction is very important to me. And all of these animals that I'm, I'm looking at right now too, very big in size. So take a look at this one. This one is just, this girl is, she's on fire. She is on fire, fire, fire. Again, more orange in person, but she just has, she is not white and yellow at all. She does not come from white and yellow bloodlines or anything like that, but she just has this really bright, fiery color to her. And again, she's one of those animals that kind of has a little bit more of that white blushing coming up from underneath her belly into her lips. She just has that kind of clean clean tangerine look to her let's see if we could get a little closer show off a little bit you can see a little bit more of the deeper brighter oranges there but of course nothing like what she's going to look like in person it, they never are but beautiful beautiful animal so we're going to do one more we're going to do one more rack here and if you guys were live, I could let you pick the rack, but let's see. Oh, we'll probably just do the rack that's in the back. How does that sound? That even rhymes, the rack in the back. So I'm gonna pull this rack right here from the back because it looks like there's a bunch of tangerines here. And we'll take a look at these and that'll be it for this video. So this will be more of a hold back kind of video. And let's see what we got in the top right here. Beautiful. I love this gal. Look how much orange is on. So on the opposite end, some of them have a ton of orange that goes into their belly. Let me see if I could show that to you. That's from like the Mandarin. That's one of the traits that the Mandarin has a lot, a ton of orange going into the belly. So beautiful animal here, just that super hypo look like Charmander. Um, she also has a ton of carrot tail going all the way down right there. And so if you breed her to a male that has a decent amount of carrot tail, you should get some babies that have pretty awesome carrot tail. And she's not up on our website, but we have geckos on our website that's very similar to her. I love looking at the carrot tail now. I'm really studying the carrot tail 
um, now that I'm breeding these guys in the masses so that I could really hold back animals that have a ton of carrot tail um, so that in the hobby in America we could have more geckos with full carrot tail because they have full carrot tail geckos in like Asia and like in Europe but you don't see a lot of that in America too much so here's this one right here um, Again, it's really hard to pick up the color, but this is our Mandarin Inferno stuff, and in person, really like a reddish orange. Let's see if I can see if I can get a little closer to it. And the goal with this project too, I'm going to take a lot of these tangerines, like I said, and cross them to bold white and yellow and marine stuff to continue to. Um, uh, bring bring out more and more contrast uh, so you could you could really see an amazing amazing amount of contrast in this animal it has a lot of like green pattern underneath it right there let's just focus there we go it's a little easier to see Let's put her on the leg, the old leg right here. All right, let's see if we could get some. I'm just gonna plop down. Yeah, there's no way the camera's gonna pick it up on her. There's a little bit of it. Sweetheart. And she's good size too. I mean, all of these geckos are really good size, which is great. Nice and chunky. But she has a ton of green. So she'll definitely be in like our stonewash projects, our emerine projects. Oops, I accidentally locked the brightness. Hold on. There we go. She'll be in like our stonewash projects, our emerine projects. Just mixing her with other tangerines that have a lot of green pattern, contrast, and eventually black spots. We'll get a lot of those black spots into the body as well so that we could have tangerines with a lot more contrast than they currently do in the hobby right now. Ooh, this one is like red right here. And she has that, I don't know if this is a genetic thing, guys, but she has that white thing going on. Let's see if you guys notice. It's, it's like this separation. Let's see if I get closer to the window here. There we go. It's like this separation of white to like that yellowish orange and then to the orangey red that's on top yeah if you were seeing this girl in person i think you guys would love it definitely an orangey red girl and we're moving in the right direction here at geeky gecko creations if you ever catch us at a show too you could really see a lot of these geckos in true form because at a show their colors are just blasted you know and we always get a lot a lot of compliments at the show um that we have you know really really pretty animals and um that you gotta see them in person so anyway you can see a lot more of that white look at that white really crisp and clean white coming up higher from the gecko's uh, abdomen there and kind of leading into the lips as well. Um, yeah, notice that on a few girls and it just seems to be like a particular trait or look that gets passed along. And so that might actually become like a white line one day or something like that, you know what I mean? So, oh, <laughs> I think I went backwards. I think that was the first girl that we showed yeah, I think we showed this girl. So I should have went... No, I think I'm right. Let me see here. Let me see here. We showed that one. I don't know. What did I do? Did we show all of them then? We must have. Anyway, we'll make this one the last one because it looks really amazing. And I don't know if we showed her off. And I would hate to not show her off. I feel like we did, but a lot of them have similar, you know, this is like a red stripe tangerine kind of thing. 
and I really wish we could capture these colors over camera. But again, a little bit of that white, like clean look riding up from the belly, stark white on the tail. Um, so it's just a really beautiful, interesting look when it has that white to it. You know what I mean? Hi, sweetheart. Let's get a little closer here. See if we could see a little bit more of the reds, which you can. So we'll make her that the last one and we'll save more holdbacks for another video. And then we have, uh, we could make a video of our breeders. If you want us to, we could go through our breeder room. So you guys let me know if you want us to go through our breeder room. Um, and so this video is coming out tonight, which is Saturday. I am updating the website with like 10 more black knights, a bunch of more tangerines, um, some lower priced animals, but still beautiful, some bold white and yellow emerine stuff. And so if you're into that kind of thing, take a look at our website. Um, there's also a customer satisfaction tab on there that I'm starting to display on the pages so that customers can know that your, your satisfaction is my number one goal um, after the care of the animals and all of that. So. Whatever it takes to make you happy, I'm about that. Um, and so on the website too, I don't really advertise it too much, but it's kind of listed there. Like if you're interested in multiple animals, you could get group deals on multiple animals. There's also payment plans where you could um, pay through shop Shopify payment installments. And when you pay that way, I can send you the gecko now, but you don't pay till later. And I'm going to do a whole video on that, but you could basically put the gecko on layaway and just pay it off from month to month. That's a really amazing thing. Um, that's a possibility as well. Uh, I forget the other perks and stuff that I listed there, but it's, it's right on my website. Obviously live arrival guarantee a minimum of a 30 day bill of health. So all of the animals that I have should survive for years and years and years. Now, of course, you can't really guarantee the life of an animal for years and years and years because there's so many things that can happen. But I guarantee the life of the animal at minimum 30 days. And as long as you keep in touch with me, if something is wrong with the animal and it clearly would have come from me or come from the, the stress of the shipping situation and the animal just never got settled in, as long as you're keeping me up to date with that process... I have no problem even refunding you, crediting you, sending you a new animal six months later if something were to happen to that animal. But the, the thing is, you got to show me how you're keeping it, um, tell me your care routine, and then also, if anything's wrong with the animal, tell me right away so that I can think about what could be wrong and how we can make it better for the animal instead of just messaging me like six months later like, hey, my animal died. So... If you can do that much, I can definitely guarantee you the health of these animals for much longer than a 30-day period. So the 30-day minimum is just a minimum period. Um, and that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what kind of other videos you would like to see. Um, we could do like what's for sale video. We could do more holdback videos. We could do a breeder room video. We could do a ball python room video. We could do a sailfin dragon room video. We could do an outdoor tag you video. Let me know what you want to see. I love you guys. I appreciate you. I'll see you in the next video and in the next live stream. And until then, have a geeky gecko. Great day. Peace.